Hi, welcome to part six then of this paper. So we're looking at 6a and we've got to express then 3 sine x plus 2 cos x in the form r sine x plus alpha. So what we do is you start with r sine x plus alpha and what I'm going to do is expand sine of x plus alpha. I'd like to think that you remember your identities. Hopefully you remember the, the sine of a plus b. You'll find this identity in most formula books. But the sine of a plus b is sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. Alright? I'm going to let my a be my x and the b be the alpha. So this becomes identical then to r sine, let's put a square bracket here actually, r sine of a, which is the x, cos of the b, so that's cos alpha, plus sine of b, so sine of alpha, cos of a, cos x. OK, we'll square off that bracket. Now we expand this out again, and we're going to have r sine x cos alpha. But I'm purposely going to rearrange this as well, to rewrite it as r cos alpha sine x. OK, I'm just going to put the x, the trig functions involving x, at the end of the term. This one falls out straight away as plus r sine alpha cos x, cos x at the end of this next term. So we get plus r sine alpha cos x. OK? Why did I put the trig functions involving x at the rear? Well, we're told that this is identical to 3 sine x okay, plus 2 cos x. OK, and hopefully you can see now that I've got two terms here, two terms here. This term is a term involving sine x, and the second term, the last term, is a term involving cos x. So when I compare them, you can see, hopefully, that the 3 replaces the r cos alpha, and the 2 replaces the r sine alpha. So therefore, I'm just going to write that down that therefore if I compare the coefficients of sine x I see that r cos alpha okay, is equal to the 3 notice I don't write identical now just write equals 3 and r sine alpha is equal to the 2 ok so I have two equations here that I've got to solve for r and alpha. So I number them 1 and 2. And the way to solve this type of simultaneous equation is to do equation 1, sorry, equation 2, beg your pardon, divided by equation 1. So if I just write this down, that 2 divided by 1 gives, OK, let's see what it gives us. It gives us r sine alpha all divided by r cos alpha okay, equals 2 divided by 3. Okay. Why did I do that? Well, I did that because the r's cancel. Okay. Then sine alpha over cos alpha Hopefully you remember what sine alpha over cos alpha is. It's tan alpha. So therefore I can say that tan alpha equals two thirds. So I can get alpha by taking the inverse tan of both sides. So the inverse tan of two thirds is what alpha is. And if I do the inverse tan of two thirds, be careful, make sure your calculator is in radians mode.
It said at the beginning of the question that alpha lies between naught and pi upon 2. It didn't say radians as such, but because there's no degrees mentioned, we know that that, or should know, that that is in radians. So if you switch your calculator into radians mode, take the inverse tan, uh, you find that you should get alpha equals 0 0.58800 and loads of other digits. So I'm just going to put and so on. Okay, so uh, let's say we give this to three significant figures. Okay, so that's going to be alpha equals 0 0.58800 radians, okay, so I can use a little c to denote that it's radians to three significant figures, 3SF. Okay, so that's alpha. To get r, one of the standard ways of getting r when you've got these equations is to do equation 1 squared plus equation 2 squared. Alright, so if we do that what we get is that if we square equation 1, we'd have r squared cos squared alpha. And if we add it to equation 2 squared, we get r squared sine squared alpha. Okay. And that would equal 3 squared plus 2 squared. Alright, if we square the 3 and we square the 2. Why did I do this? Well, Hopefully you've noticed that r squared is a common factor. So if I take r squared out, I then have sine squared, sorry, I beg your pardon, I have cos squared alpha in this example, cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha equals 3 squared. Might as well work this out now. That's 9. 2 squared is 4. 9 and 4 is 13. Now hopefully you recognize that cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha is a well-known identity. You most probably should know it as cos squared a plus sine squared a will always come to 1 for any angle a. So for our angle alpha this is going to come to 1. So that's r squared times 1. In other words r squared equals 13. And so therefore r is going to equal the square root of 13. Alright? Okay, so let's just scroll up. So we've now got r and alpha. So therefore, I can wind this problem up by saying that 3 sin x plus 2 cos x, remember we were told that it was identical to r sin x plus alpha. Well, I now know r is root 13. Okay. And then I have the sine of x plus alpha. Now alpha was 0 0.588 to three significant figures. So I'll just pop that in there. 0 0.588. Okay. And that's in radians. Okay. And there we have it. Okay. That's the end then to part A.